China is hunting humans abroad. I've been personally in contact with more than 20 people who have shared their stories anonymously, and what struck me was the sheer perseverance and dedication to stopping any and all speech against the Chinese government, no matter where these people are in the entire world. I base this video on their stories, as well as criminal reports that are documented online. To protect their identities, I only use certain details and excerpts from their tales. In 2014, Xi Jinping, the dictator of China, mobilized the biggest security apparatus in the world, Operation Fox Hunt, Liahu Xingdong. It was time to use his massive anti-corruption drive to actually hunt down political opponents, dissidents, and people that fell out of favor with his clique within the Chinese government. Go to all the ends of the earth to catch these people. No one would be safe. China describes Fox Hunt as some kind of international anti-corruption campaign. It is not. Instead, Fox Hunt is a sweeping bid by General Secretary Xi to target Chinese nationals whom he sees as threats and who live outside of China, across the world. We're talking about political rivals, dissidents, and critics seeking to expose China's extensive human rights violations. You see, they're not just going after financial criminals, but they're also going after dissidents, pro-democracy people, people that just don't like the Chinese government. They go after family. Conduit businesses spring up in the US and operate to help find these people on US soil. They set up fake organizations, sometimes even Chinese pro-democracy clubs, to get all the information of dissidents to send back to China in order to create new victims of the fox hunt and to get people to stop speaking out against the Chinese government. The guise is anti-corruption. The anti-corruption crackdown where Xi Jinping purged more than one million members of the Chinese Communist Party. But it wasn't just about that. In fact, it was about seizing all political power within China. And unfortunately, that also means reaching outside of China's borders. Every single person with money or power in China has been involved in corruption in some way, shape, or form. So that makes a lot of easy targets. It's pretty genius, actually. There was this idea that China could start finding these people, these financial criminals abroad, hunting outside of China's borders. We could kind of see one of the first tests of this apparatus when Xi Jinping visited in 2015. FBI agents in the US still found themselves skirmishing with Chinese spies deployed to intimidate dissidents in American cities during the presidential visit. I kid you not, in the US, the FBI was fighting off Chinese spies trying to intimidate people in the US who were against the Chinese government. They are intertwined in society and coerce Chinese Americans to help too, even when they're unwilling. They may pay a person in a Chinese community $1,800 to surveil someone for five days. Small forms of harassment can be seen in Chinese neighborhoods in the USA or the UK or Australia, where Chinese police car replicas are used to harass the local Chinese population. Bigger cases include entire teams who are experts in getting people to repatriate back to China. They slip in and out of American airports with ease. They use international borders and they cross them easily. Before governments really understood it, the databases at customs, you know, when people get off the plane and try to enter a country, they really didn't have the information to tell them what to look for. They hire networks of drivers here on American soil. They go to residential houses and they give the victim an option. These networks are especially useful when the Chinese agents have run out of options because the first option is usually harassing the person over video call or email or finding ways to disrupt their life. But when that doesn't work out, they have to resort to actually being here in the US. Sometimes they'll get notes left on their window or two RMB left in their mailbox. Or in some cases, they will even get an agent 
to fly a grandparent, especially frail and sick ones, over to the US and drop them on the doorstep of the victim to say, come home to China now or else we've got your family. You see, the family angle is one of the most disturbing angles, but is one that is often used. Hundreds of fox hunt victims that they target live right here in the United States, and many are American citizens or green card holders. The Chinese government wants to force them to return to China, and China's tactics to accomplish that are shocking. For example, when it couldn't locate one fox hunt target, the Chinese government sent an emissary to visit the target's family here in the United States. The message that they said to pass on? The target had two options return to China promptly, or commit suicide. There's a pattern to these hunts. Create networks, swoop into the country at key moments, insulated by layers of forced recruits, hired civilians, private detectives, and even street criminals. The pursuit can last for years, sometimes even after US law enforcement intervenes. You wanna know how brazen the Xi Jinping regime is? China isn't playing nice anymore. Hiding in the background and biding its time to rule the world, that's the old China playbook. When Chinese officials originally came to the US to kind of discuss what Fox Hunt was gonna be about, maybe to cooperate with the US in catching actual criminals, the Chinese officials came with large delegations that snuck in Chinese police officers that in between the meetings with US officials would go off and harass victims on US soil to try to coerce to come back to China. These diplomats, these people that came to fly over from China to discuss the very thing that they're going to do, ended up doing it in between meetings. China publishes and parades the victims' addresses and pictures in Chinese state media to get people in China to harass them and to scare potential dissidents or criminals. In fact, CGTN, which is China's state mouthpiece in English, was banned in the UK for airing forced confessions of criminals in order to scare people away into not speaking against the state. But it gets even more insane. Here's what they did to one victim. China will get authorities in other countries like Mexico to detain you and deport you back to China instead of the USA. They'll tell victims that they're going on a plane to Texas or wherever, but they're actually going to Shanghai. While the US doesn't capitulate in this kind of behavior, other countries like Mexico do. The main goal is to instill fear into Chinese people abroad. You're never safe. However, under Xi Jinping's regime, it's not only Chinese people, it's anyone who is speaking out against the Chinese government and its human rights atrocities. There's this thing where people think it's just a Chinese on Chinese thing, so fewer people will care, but that's not the case. The CSIS, or the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, also publicly acknowledged that China is using threats and intimidation against members of Canada's Chinese community that are akin to the tactics used in Operation Fox Hunt. Canada's intelligence service said that these tactics can also be used as cover for silencing dissent, pressuring political opponents, and instilling a general fear of state power, no matter where a person is located. In fact, some of the people that reached out to me when I was doing research for this video told me that China has employed a network of non-ethnically Chinese people, ironically, mostly Canadians, that are currently operating in and outside of China. The Chinese government uses them as fodder to carry out tasks that it deems too unclean, and there's no incentive to protecting their foreign assets after they complete their task, as they've shown to divorce themselves from the asset as soon as they're deemed useless, or have completed their tasks. Many people who have been co-opted by China have come to regret it, as their home governments are monitoring this type of behavior very closely these days, as seen in many cases post-2014. One such case was the arson of a Xi Jinping virus statue in California, made by a Chinese dissident. An American was co-opted by Chinese agents to do everything in his power to get the statue removed, and now could potentially be tied to something much bigger. They hire private investigators and they try to manipulate people around them, break the law in multiple ways to complete their task. And in the end, they're caught. And China divorces themselves from the asset. Police officers and just plain old citizens have been caught working with the Chinese government and Western countries are finally starting to pay close attention. 
Xi Jinping has brought a sense of urgency to the process. There is a boldness, a brazenness in a way that they are treating us. They don't think that there will be a consequence. But all is not lost. There is a law for this. It's called transnational repression, and it's for everyone on American soil. I can't speak for other countries, but if you or someone you know is in the U.S., you can reach out to authorities to stop this heinous harassment in its tracks. It's not only China, in fact. Any country that represses people can be guilty of this. In fact, many countries around the world have been found to be working hand in hand with China. You see, the Chinese government is operating concentration camps in Western China and committing genocide against the Uyghurs, which is an ethnic group in Western China. When people escape these camps and go to other countries to tell their story, China does everything that they can to get them back. So Arslan, how is China hunting Uyghurs in other countries? Well, you would have seen recently, China has had a big influence in the Middle East, in places like um, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Turkey. And how this generally works is there are huge economic gains to be made. And so we want to look at the process of how China tries to extradite the Uyghurs back into uh, their hands. And how they do this is uh, once they have the deal with the country, what they do is those countries then uh, without the person's knowledge either cancel uh, the individual's residence permit. Uyghurs are technically Chinese citizens. So when they go to renew their passports at the Chinese consulate or embassy, they'll say you need to head back to Beijing or you need to go back to Urumqi and you need, and you need to renew it there. And you know, today going back into uh, China or going back to East Turkestan, you know, that would be the that would be the equivalent of a Jew going back into Nazi Germany to renew to renew their papers. The cases that I know, especially having lived in Turkey for eight years, what seems to happen is these Uyghurs are sent to these deportation centers, then they are visited by the the Tajik government. They are given false papers. They are given a Tajik passport, a country that they've never been to. Then they are extradited to Tajikistan and then they are sold to China or they're extradited to other Central Asian countries. In the thousands, if not tens of thousands of people since 2017 have been uh, deported back into China's hands. What is the motivation? Why would China be hunting down Uyghurs abroad to send them back to, to China? Well, if you've got thousands of people saying and they're, that they are pure evidence of, you know, the victims of concentration camp detainees. I mean, these people um, are not necessarily activists. They have links, either their mother, their father, their, their brother, their sister, or half of their family are in the camps. And um, them being on the outside is physical evidence that there is a genocide going on, that there are concentration camps going on. I mean, to this day, to this day, for God's sake, in 2022, they are still trying to hide that there is no genocide, that they're in a concentration camps. They won't up, open up their borders. Um, the very next thing to have people on the ground, which you, which you cannot have, is to have these witnesses mm -hmm. um, uh, to these atrocities. Now, it's easy to feel hopeless, like China has a stranglehold on all this that there's no escaping China and that they will do anything to stop any and all dissent or criticism of the CCP and its human rights abuses. But that is exactly what they want you to feel. Western countries like the US, Canada, and the UK, and more are waking up, albeit much too late. But they're offering avenues, outlets, and real recourse for what is happening, and they are taking it very seriously. Overreach like Fox Hunt is meant to cause fear and panic and silence in the public but now it's having the opposite effect. Billions of dollars in capital outflow from China, governments and companies around the world divorcing themselves from China, and people shining a massive beacon on what China is doing abroad.